Right, I've still got quite a lot of questions here. So, let's fly through them and only one more beer. Here we go. Mm. It's cold again, nice. Branston W, have you ever been to London? Yes, mate, I have. I've been to London many a time. I'm a proper country boy and the thought of London when I first went down was a bit scary, I guess. But I lived there for two and a half years. Uh, started off in the East End, had six months there, and then I went into sort of North London, Muswell Hill area, and worked on Oxford Street. So I was there in the heart of it, in one of the busiest gyms in the world. It had five and a half thousand members, and it was Holmes Place, Oxford Street. So a shout out to anyone who went to Holmes Place, Oxford Street. It was an awesome place to be back in the day, and that was in about the year 2000, 2001. So yep i do like london but i would never ever live in a town or city ever again not a chance grundy why why no grundy why favorite pack for a two or three day hike hmm i want to say my osprey exos 38 it's comfy lightweight it's got enough sort of airspace around the back for if you are sweating it'll help dry you out a bit so yeah, I'm going to say that. And it's a 40, I think it's 42 litres the one I've got because it's the large maybe. So it's enough to put everything in you need. Daniel James, has the weather ever forced you to abandon a video? No. Nope, I'm not doing that. I may one day abandon if it gets too dangerous, but um, no, nah, I've sort of managed and battled my way through and really it's not even a battle it's more just surviving the uncomfortableness of it that's all tom bambino 222 hey up pal have you thought of doing the cmd arete route in winter well i've done it in winter but you are meaning when it's completely snow covered and it is a crampon situation all the way yes mate and I think if it gets to that point this year, which I'm sure it will, me and you should go up, maybe take uh, our other mate Ben as well, and we'll go do that route, because I think that'll be absolutely awesome. So yeah, tie ourselves together, make sure that we're safe, get some crampons on, and we'll go do that. Simon Barwise, what is the rub down coat you use, and how much do they cost? That is this one here. Uh, <laughs> right, let's have a quick look. This is called the Infinity Microlite Jacket. Uh, how much do they cost? I'm really not sure. I got given this by Rab, which was uh, very kind of them. I'm gonna say it's around the 200 pound mark. I'm not exactly sure. It's very comfortable. It fits me very well. It's light enough to sort of carry for your summer camps as well, because obviously on an evening it always does get cold. So it's great just to stuff it in a stuff sack and just get this out. Um, as a deep winter jacket, it's not thick enough, but it's just another great mid layer to have. So yeah, I definitely rate it. You know, it's quite a simple jacket. It's just got simple pockets on it and everything like that, but it looks good, feels good, and it does what it's meant to do, and that is keep you warm. So, great jacket. Ian Simfit, you've got to choose the last pitch to make in the UK. Where would it be? The last pitch. See, really, that's where you're asking, where would you want me to be buried or my ashes spread? And I would say... I'm gonna oh, let's go with let's go with Great End. I do like Great End. I've got good memories of that place. It's in the centre of it all, and from there you can see so much. And you can look down on Sprinkling Town, over to Great Gable, back over to Bowfell, up to Scarfell Pike. Yeah, it's just awesome. So yeah, I'm gonna say there. Good bloke outdoors. Would you ever do a film or multi-day long distance hike like the Cleveland Way Coast to Coast? Yeah, so definitely as um, time is now becoming uh, easier for me just because my kids are growing up a bit, then yes, I'll definitely be doing some of them. Um, 
I only want to do things that are going to challenge me though. It's nice to go for a putter around and a walk and you know do some sort of long days walking, but I'll have to find something that's going to push me, you know, and be different to other people because everyone's done all that sort of stuff on YouTube and stuff. And I'm just, I don't know, I think there's things out there that other people haven't done and I would like to be the first to try, challenge myself to do it. So there we go. Oh, Bartlett 94. Do you only wear trail running shoes or do you wear walking boots as well? I love wearing my sort of running shoes because I am a runner and I like to be lightweight and move fast. So even when I've got a heavyweight backpack on, I will often pick my legs up and jog. So it's nice to have some running shoes on for that. Come winter, I definitely wear walking boots because you need it for the waterproof side of it and keep your feet warm. So good tip for you, buy a set of winter boots that are half a size too big so you can put a big fat sock in there and keep your feet warm. I'm not flying through these very fast am I? This is going to be a long one. <laughs> I hope you're not bored. Anyway, Yorkshire Outdoors, what is the most challenging climb you've done and what made it hard? Challenging climb? Okay, I am going to say a fell race when I was 13 in the under 14s and I said to my mum I am going to be at the turning point and I pointed it out said I'm going to be at that turning point 50 yards ahead of the next person and I always used to push myself hard anyway when I was fell running and I did what I said I was going to do and this was in Alva in Scotland uh, it runs from a show like a a show, I don't know if his class is Alva show, but the fell races from there run up a very steep sort of hill and back down again. So I'm gonna say that. And as part of the show, there, uh, this is a fact for you guys. So, me and my dad were the world good and cleat champion, being my dad, and I was the junior world good and cleat, good and cleat champion. So get that, had a trophy for that, both of us. Um, so we turned up and obviously there's all the Scottish people who sort of uh, tr train and you know they, they were sort of there to win it. And because me and my dad were both really good runners, we learned how to do the Gurdon Cleat and we won. So yes, world champion, <laughs> that was a good day. I remember eating the prize of a peppered haggis and thoroughly enjoying it. Bryden, UK, is it? lay this lug or lay this log wife and i can't decide cheers brilliant good argument that one um it's lay this lug these are your lugs we've all got a set of lugs and it's just about laying your lug so yeah old yorkshire term and yeah it's just something i've always said marcus j ball what are your three favorite hikes to do in the lake district while camping or just a day Three favourite hikes. Right, quickly then. I'm going to say from Seathwaite, past Dyehead Town, onto the Corridor Route, up to the top of Scarfell Pike, and then coming back along the tops to Great End and then back down, making a bit of a circular for it. Um, from Walsdale to Mickledore, and then from Mickledore doing the Lord's Rake, and then from the Lord's Rake going up the... Um, what is it, Traverse, Climbers Traverse something, I can't remember, up to the top of Scarfell, absolutely brilliant that one. And the final one, I would say the run that I've just done, which is from Rhinos Pass, going over Crinkle Crags, Bowfell and Esk Pike. Absolutely awesome that, it's quite a technical one and just the views all the way are just fantastic, so there you go. Adam Smith 1990, what do you do for a living now? Well, I've sort of covered that. I'm trying not to work at the minute and just do the YouTube thing, but it's not paying me enough. So if you can contribute in any way, that would be greatly appreciated. But yeah, uh, for the last sort of, I don't know, 15 years, so I've pretty much been a self-employed builder, just doing all sorts of uh, different things there. Netty makes cakes. Netty makes cakes, that's nice. Favourite toy in the 80s? A chopper. Lego, Action Man, or Scale Electrics? Oh, good question is that. Well, oh, we did have a bit of a chopper actually as kids. When I was really little, I remember having one. Wish I still had it, they cost quite a lot now. 
But I was always into BMX, so definitely BMXing, I would say, was probably the main thing that I really enjoyed uh, through the 80s. Lego as well, mass into Lego. Um, Action Man, brilliant. I mean, we used to, we'd have them, do you remember Action Man? You used to have tanks. And they were about that sort of size with like eight wheels on. And we used to sit on them and use them to fly down the uh, hills where we live. So that was good fun. Scale electrics as well, yeah, always had one of them, so that was always good as well. So that is a tough one. But I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with my BMX. I know it says chopper here, but BMXing, I was well into that, and even now I could probably do a 360 and a tail whip and a few other tricks. I'll have to get back on another go. Jack underscore I underscore. Worst night's camp you've ever had. And the best, if there is one. For me, I can't compare them really. Best and worst. Do you know what? It's not like they all blend into one, but usually it's the ones that have got more stimulation involved are the best ones. So for me, that is camping in bad weather, um, which are thoroughly enjoyable. You know, sometimes they're more uncomfortable, but you gain stronger memories from that. Although it is amazing just to sit out in good weather as well and just taking a brilliant sunset. So, yeah, nothing really stands out. I just pretty much love getting out and just enjoyed it all, really. So, the hybrid hiker. Does the perfect wild camp pillow even exist? I've only got one pillow. I have used a couple in the past prior to that, but mine's the Sea to Summit Aeros pillow, I think it is. Small, lightweight, and... It just does exactly what I need it to do, and that's just keep my head elevated a bit. I do sleep on my side, so without it I would struggle, but yeah, I think it's about as good as I'm going to ever really need, so I'm going to go with that. Sasquatch Spen. Did you get Blue as a puppy, or was he a rescue dog? How long did it take to train him so well? So yes, I got him as a puppy. Um, I was going to get a collie anyway because collies are what we've always had as a family and I know collies well and they're just my type of dog. Blue is my perfect most ideal dog because I go out running a lot and it's all off-road stuff so what better to share that time with than having a collie to do it because they need the exercise so yeah had him from a puppy and training him just get stuck in put the time in make sure you're all doing the same commands I keep saying that, but that is exactly what you need to do. AJ Paler, 84. What's your favourite type of pea? <laughs> What's your favourite type of pea? I like peeing all over. I'm quite happy to pee anywhere, really. But um, no, I'm going to say pea straight from the pod. As a kid, my dad has always grown, honestly, hundreds of different things in this time. So we've got a plethora of things growing in my mum and dad's house. And peas are always something that my dad's always grown. And I used to love going into the garden, just sitting there, stuffing my mouth with peas and then just eating it all in one. So, yeah, peas from the pod. Grinter NX Than, a trail you want to complete. Well, as I said earlier, I need something challenging. So something that maybe i've not heard of or you know there's there's different ones there's coast to coast but long coast to coast ones so i might try something like that rather than just the sort of boring ones that everyone does um phil beresford would you rather have a lettuce for a head or broccoli for arms <laughs> lettuce for a head or broccoli for arms that's easy of course it would be broccoli for arms because then you can just eat eat your way through it so and broccoli keeps growing, so you you know, you know what I'm saying with that. So yeah, a, a lifetime supply of broccoli, I'd be happy with that. Smudger photography. If you could only have one tent for use all year round, which would it be? All year round, I'd probably say the Abisco light one because I do trust it in bad weather. I've not tested any other tents to that extreme, so I'm probably going to say that one, but. There's many a tent out there that I feel will be a better design than that and I just need to get hold of them and test them out, that's all, so yeah. Andy E222. Long sunny nights or cold crisp winter nights for wild camping? 
close one there, I would say, because I really do enjoy the sort of nice nights where you can just sit out and maybe have a mate or two with you and just chill, have a beer and just take in that sunset. Absolutely brilliant. You know, a bit of heat, you know, it's lovely as that. But I have to say, winter nights for me every time. I love winter camping. Uh, Aveline, Aveline, Kimberly. Also, also, so that means she's already asked. All oh, right, there's another question here from her. Let's go to this one first. Tips for winter camping. Getting back into camping, but worried it's getting cold. Okay, so the tips for winter camping. Just buy a brilliant down sleeping bag and a brilliant sleeping mat with a high R value. You, that's what you need. And obviously a decent um, pillow just to make yourself comfortable. And then clothes that are going to keep you warm. That's what, what it's all about, keeping warm. Well, I know I've been waffling on for way too long because the SD card just ran out. So <laughs> sorry for boring you all. Anyway, where was I? Aveline or Aveline, Kimberly. Also, the best way to find wild camping spots. Use your eyes. Simple thing. I mean, obviously, you can do some research. You're going to find out what sort of route you want to sort of walk in the first place and look on Google Maps. You might have some sort of potential ideas of where you can head for. But really, as you're out and about, just take note of where you can actually pitch a tent as you're passing because then it always gives you something that you can drop back to as a safe ground, knowing that you can pitch a tent. So yeah, just keep your eyes peeled, that's all. And do a recce. Sometimes if you want to do a wild camp somewhere, then just go out the week before, two weeks before, mark it, make sure that you know exactly where it is. Possibly use something like What Three Words. I often do that. I just sort of snapshot the What Three Words location. So at least I've got lots of different places that I can aim for if needed. So there you go. Fitzy 86, what's your go-to winter tent? There's a lot about tents, isn't there? I think I might have to do something on tents. I need to test some more though, really properly test some. So yeah, I've broken a few tents and I have tents that I've not yet broken, but will try to. So I'm not gonna answer that one because I think I've sort of already covered it. Cass Lingard. You can have one night while camping with anyone from past or present. Who would it be and why? With anyone from past or present. Do you know what? I am going to say my old mate Rob. So when I was 18, one of my best mates at the time was this guy called Rob. And he was in a car accident um, from being on a bike and died. He was an absolutely awesome lad. We went out BMXing all the time. There was three or four of us who would be out all the time doing adventures and just doing fun stuff. And he was such a cool lad, he really was. And obviously, to this day, we all sort of miss him as well. So I would say that I would like to be out and just go for a camp with him and just chat and just see what his life may have been, you know, if he was still around. So yeah. Top block. Red Tent Adventures. Is there somewhere you've not camped but you really want to? I mean, there's so many places in the world I'd love to go camp, definitely. I've been all the way around sort of Europe and I've seen so many amazing places that would be great places to camp, but I've only really done the roof tent thing, which is, you know, on a road somewhere or maybe on some mountain track but I've never done the wild camping in Europe so I think I'd like to go around Europe and camp in some cool places there obviously I'd love to do Everest and all that as well but that goes without saying Luke Curtis number one what advice do you have to younger people looking to do what you do so wild camping wise and just getting out and adventuring literally just get out on adventure you know you're only going to build the experience up by getting out there and trying it yourself so pack well make sure you've got the kit that's going to sort of help you through whatever the conditions are and the route that you're going to take and things like that and just limit the risk as much as possible but don't fear the risk you need to get out and just embrace the adventure that's all so just get out there mate definitely 
Hudders122. If you could do a video anywhere in the world, hike and camp, where would it be? Okay, we sort of covered it, but I'm just going to say I'd love to go to base camp of Everest and film and film the true situation there just to do with like the litter the excitement of the place the fact that you are sitting underneath the highest mountain on earth and the people you know it'd be just great to do almost like a sort of documentary sort of style thing with the real side of it all so yeah that's where i'd like to go boom there we go quick change of scenery for you I had a couple of technical issues when I came to upload my footage there was some parts missing which was a bit of a pain rather frustrating but rather than crying about it I just thought I'll bash on and re-record so here I am sat in my lovely bedroom my nice revealed stonework on this wall which I did myself and the bed I made myself as well which is out of an old door which I stripped down split up put there's some sections of it here and then at the end there's the other part of it and then this is just sort of wrapped around with some scaffolding board which I just made look oldy worldy and all that and then I've just held it all together with some oak uh, dowels that I carved myself so there we go anyway back to some questions I hope you're not too bored by now because I've been going on for quite a while haven't I James Harvey how do you find all your walking routes for your mint camps well, I just look at a map and look at all the footpaths and I just plan my route from that. I will cross-reference with something like Google Maps because then you can sort of look and see what the terrain's like a little bit more as well and possibly find places to camp. So if you find some sort of green areas that are on a flat section, then obviously there's a good chance that you might be able to put a tent there. So generally I do that. I do do the OS maps on my iPad. So if you pay like £20 a year or whatever, you can have all the maps of the UK on here so then I can just search any area and it's just at my fingertips and dead easy to do so worth considering that one step away from the screens would you rather be a bear sized badger or a badger sized bear <laughs> um, well a bear sized badger has it has to be that has to be a bear sized badger Reasons being, I like badgers because uh, when we were kids we used to go to my granddad's farm and in the woods there they had badgers so we would go and hide out late at night and watch the badgers from a distance. So definitely that. And also the fact that there are already badger sized bears because they're little ones. So, you know, let's be unique and just be a one-off bear sized badger. Uh, uh, Daniel Malley. Does your wedding vegetables never rub on long walks because, boy, mine look like a war zone? <laughs> um, uh, great question. Well, it is classed as a sports injury, I would say. So um, I never have that issue. I really don't. Um, so my advice to you would be to probably get some sort of like uh, cream that you'd get for cycling because cyclists do have this sort of problem with a bit of chafing here and there. So... I think that's probably a good shout for you, mate. So check uh, some of these creams out for the cyclists. Mark Ingleby Photography. Where's the completed yurtish? I know I haven't done it yet. I have already sort of mentioned, but it's just finding the time to do these things. That's all. So I will definitely be getting on with it and hopefully get it done sort of maybe next spring or something like that. Because over winter, it's just a nightmare to do anything outside. Dear Janice X, or Kiss, did you ever get lost in the Lake District? I don't think I've ever been lost. Obviously there's times when you have to get the map out and you have to double check and just make sure that you are on the right path because sometimes you may be thinking, I'm not sure. But there was one time when we, there was quite a few of us, and we went up to the summit of Scarfell Pike. We went from the side where Great Moss is, so it's quite a long drag up there, but it was completely clagged out. And the top of Scarfell Pike, it's just really sort of rocky and it all looks the same. And you can't really make out a path very easily. So what happened was we sort of worked our way round and then joined on to another path and then got to the summit. But when we were at the summit, we set off down the path that we joined onto, which was actually the Wasdale uh, side. So we ended up going down towards uh, the bottom side of Mickledore and then we had to come back up over the top of Mickledore and then down. So yeah. You just have to be careful in the clag and make sure that you are not 
go in the wrong direction because it is a hell of a long walk back. Tom H. BBB. Do you have a camp you rank number one amongst all the ones you've done? Well, all my camps I enjoy. I think just the feeling of getting outside and being part of nature like that and having a simple way of living for a night just makes you feel great. But sometimes you get stronger memories from the ones that have, say, bad weather or just like some euphoria from being stood on top of a mountain looking down at everything with the most incredible sunset. But one one camp that stands out to me is when I was about 14 or 15 and me and my mate Ben took our mountain bikes to the Isle of Sky with his mum and we camped in the garden of this little cottage and I woke up one morning with the tent absolutely flat against us, blowing flat. The wildest, wildest storm came through and my mate Ben just slept through it all but it was just brilliant to sort of be in that situation where you like as I say I woke up and it's almost like you're just in a survival situation straight away thinking shit what am I going to do now so yeah I really did enjoy that it was great just having those sort of few nights sleeping in the tent until that night and then we ended up sleeping in the cottage so <laughs> I think it was more about keeping us safe back in the day but yeah that was good GP everyday adventurer what piece of kit could you not do without that's a tricky one because there's a lot of essentials that you definitely need for getting out and wild camping, especially with the safety side of things. Um, I mean, I can't do without blue, so let's say blue was definite, but um, what else? I mean, the thing that carries you further than any other piece of kit is just positivity. So I want to say positivity and a smile. That is the, the thing that will just carry you through no matter what the circumstance. So there you go. So finally then, let's go with share our adventure. Can you film a video about all things blue and how you trained him, etc.? It's not a bad shout, is that, I'd say. Um, if I did a complete one with everything involving blue, purely because a lot of people out there who sort of, they might see like me doing this channel and see blue and think, wow, I want to go get a dog. And they don't really understand how difficult it can be actually having a pet like a dog and often I would advise against it because you need to give that dog the simulation that it needs and deserves and if you don't they just go a bit crazy it's cruel to the dog to keep your dog inside pretty much all day when you're out working and everything so yeah it won't be a bad shout I think uh, more just to do with like how to look after a dog properly maybe something along those lines but so it has been a pleasure answering your questions and a massive thanks to you all for putting the time in just to come up with something for me to rattle on about. I know it's been a bit long-winded, but for anyone who's still here, massive respect to you. If you'd like to contribute towards the channel and just help me continue this path of becoming a YouTuber, it is a tough path to be on, I've got to say, but it will be greatly appreciated. You can buy me a coffee on the Buy Me A Coffee link in the description, or you can come and join the Patreon, which is a great little community, and I'm just going to build on that, and that's just going to get better and better as time goes on. So anything will be greatly appreciated. But for the first thing, can you just give this video one of these? and every other video that you watch of mine. It costs you nothing and it just helps hopefully push these videos up the ladder of YouTube. So thank you very much again and you can go get some sleep now after I have bored you to tears. So take care guys, I will see you on the next one.